Welcome, one and all, to the remarkable example of modern entertainment at its finest. Now, most of you youngins, I'm sure, know about our great national hero and pioneer, Josiah Blackwater. Him that gave the town of Blackwater its nomenclature. You see, only about a hundred years ago, were nothing here but big old force, ferocious beasts, surly savages, arid deserts, and unconquered mountains. The West, well, the whole West was untamed. Your mama probably told you bedtime stories about Josiah's many adventures. But I'm gonna tell you a story you ain't likely to have heard about his possum hat. Now, Josiah Blackwater was born in the year of our Lord, 1782, in a log cabin just west of Ansburg. He was a special boy. His pa gave him his first rifle when he was three years old. Boy, he took to it right away. He exclaimed, There's a whole mess of critters out there in the woods that aim to eat us. So I'm gonna consume them first. Yes, sir. He really took to killing all manner of things. He was such a keen shot. One morning, he was sorting up some winter turnips for the root cellar when a big old bear and her cubs came in the kitchen hunting for food. It had a mind to eat up all the jams and preserves. Josiah grabbed that bear and wrestled her to the ground and squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. He whooped the tar clean out of that big old critter. Then he tied her up, grabbed them cups, and ground them into sausages while the mama bear watched. Mm, that fine eating. His mom and pa knew right then he was cut out to be the finest wild frontiersman that ever drew breath. But first, they wanted him to get some book learning. After only three days of attending school, Josiah beat the living daylights out of a class bully and announced to his daddy that he was tired of ciphering and mathematics on account it's only good for adding up the number of critters or Indians you can kill. So, he ran away from home and headed west. Now, these lands were occupied by savages then, and when Josiah Blackwater came scouting through, he recognized it to be a land of splendor, wasted on those that couldn't appreciate it on account of worship and false idols. He got rid of all them pesky buffalo, and thereby ensured those infernal engines didn't have nothing to eat. Of course, that got them mightily riled up, so he had to slaughter all of them, too. Just like his daddy had once done to the Redcoats in 1775. Right about that time, he met an Indian girl he took pity on, on account of having annihilated her family. She was 12 years old, and so he took her as his wife. She gave him two sons before she died of typhus. Now, y'all know that Josiah Blackwater wore a possum for a hat. But most don't know how that came to be. Well, one day, old Josiah was riding a couple of alligators down the Lanahatchee River, riding, standing up, and shooting eagles right out of the sky when he sees a big old mountain lion about to eat a possum. Josiah grabbed that mountain lion by the tail and wrestled it till it was plumb dead. Well, that possum really took to Josiah, followed him around like a dog loyal to its master. Yes. They had a lot of adventures together. Now, Josiah never cried a day in his life, but he pert near dead on the day that possum passed, for they were mighty fine friends. So he skinned it and made it into a hat. Back in them days, a possum skin was as good as money, but he never parted with that hat, not even for $10. Once he founded the town of Blackwater, he sent word for settlers to come. It was the last stop in the West before San Francisco. He met a girl by the name of Rufina Hellsby at a barn dance one night, took her as his wife, and settled down. Built himself a cattle empire and had 14 youngins. But Josiah Blackwater wasn't the home-loving kind, and he grew mighty restless. One day on the courthouse steps, he announced, you may all go to hell, and I will go to Saint Denis. And so he did enjoyed French pursuits of strumpets and wanton gluttony, which is where he came upon the idea of running for Congress. He wore that possum hat every day as a congressman, as a reminder of where he come from, saying, I may live in barbaric splendor, but I always remember, keep your friends close and your gun closer, because you don't know when you might have to shoot them. 